right, welcome back, folks, to another episode of On the Delo. This is episode 137, and I have my new friend, Laurel. 138. 138? 138. Oh, oh 138. That's right, because I, had to, I didn't put Jeremy's in yet. All right, so we're at 138. That's, All your, right. that's your lucky number today. That's my number. This is exciting times. Happy um, to be here. Yeah, thanks. Have you done a podcast before? Yes. Yeah? Not with the big head, uh, earphones on. Yeah, I, I make everybody <laughs> put the headphones on. I think, it, listen to how crisp it is. It is. Right? Right? Yeah, you can hear different. yourself mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. So, well, welcome. I, I met you through LinkedIn and I was definitely intrigued with your journey and, and I figured, you know what? I'll just get her in here and talk to her. I love it. Yeah. I love talking. I love people. I think it'll be an interesting conversation. Well, so. let's, uh, let's kick it off. Tell, uh, tell me and everybody else listening um, where you grew up and kind of the beginnings of, uh, of your life. Well, that's a... Could it's be a broad long. Question. Yeah, yeah, broad question. I'm from Washington State. Okay. I moved to Arizona in seventh grade, um, which is a horrible time to move your kid. Don't ever move your kid. Yeah, because that's what middle. Middle school. school? Yeah. So Everybody's kind of awkward in middle everybody. school. I know exactly. You have your f- child friends, and then yeah. So I, that was a hard transition. We moved here. My dad um, was a financial advisor and he kind of struggled with depression. So we thought that let's get out of the rain, you know, move into the sun and that did not solve the problem. But, um, yeah. So I moved here in eighth grade and have been here ever since. So you're basically a native. Basically. I, uh, my husband played pro hockey. I spent two years with him in Germany while he was finishing out his, uh, hockey career. But other than that, I've been here. Wow. What, how was Germany? Did you like it? I, I feel like I'm too friendly to be in Germany. Really? Are they pretty rude out there? Like, oh, no. Nah. Well, it's just like it's a cultural thing. Yeah. I'm out walking the dog, and I'm a morning person, and I'm like, <laughs> good morning. And, th- I mean, not like, yeah, hello, like nothing, you know. So it's uh, – but I was a model over there for two years. I couldn't work. Um, so I have been a model from six to my mid-20s. Okay. And so I did that a little bit over there. Yeah. But I think uh, – yeah, it took me out of sort of like a party atmosphere with that I had with my friends at the time, and right. I think ultimately was really beneficial. Um, that I was just I was away from it for a while, yeah. and then kind of forged a new path after that, like sort of being out of that, separating yourself from that energy to yes. create new energy. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what, uh, talk about modeling for a little bit. Is that um, is it a pretty like uh, high stress business to be in? I mean, I've got three girls now. Let's just say I would never, I would never put my kids in that industry. I think um, it really damaged me a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm still healing from that. I think the perception of when we're young, we're just trying to, we're just trying to find our place in the world and feel loved and accepted and all those things. And, you know, one child might experience a, or one might, one child might interpret an experience one way and the other child has the same experience, but has a completely different interpretation of it. My whole upbringing sort of was focused on my external, like, and being told, um, The message was beauty is ultimately the most important thing. That's where your value lies. Um, And I'm like, I don't broadcast this to out anymore. I feel like I've healed from it. But um, I was a stripper for like a period of time, a couple years. And as I've unpacked all of this and healed from a lot of those things, it's funny. It's ironic. All these years wanting to be seen for just like the internal and the values that I have and what I have to bring to the world, but not, that wasn't my experience growing up. The external was what was celebrated. Yeah. So then going into this sort of a field, it almost like it exasperated the whole, all of the wounds. Right. It was just even more of what I didn't want, but I put myself in that situation. So, you know, I think probably the last five years, since um, we talked about sobriety, I'm almost six years sober. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Yeah. Um, but as you know, when you're numbing yourself, you can't do this this reflection. You can't do this uh, this work of, like, unpacking why you did the shit you did in the first place. Yeah, a thousand percent. You know, so that's what a lot of, like, the last five years of my life has been. Um, 
So, so yeah, I mean, kind of just going on that topic because you've now brought it up. Um, and, and, and again, you know, seeing you on LinkedIn and, and common connections and all that and hearing about your sobriety and, and a lot of people that listen to this and know me, um, they know like all the inner struggles I've gone through. And as I told you, I was in the music business and, and the music business wasn't the antithesis for my craziness. It was actually the insurance business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the business segment just, I would, assume kind of like the modeling segment of just anything there's there's a craziness that goes along with um, you know, insurance salesmen, bankers, mortgage, you know, everything revolves around alcohol, bad food, all that sort of stuff. So sure. so for you, obviously I, I would assume when you were partying and doing all that stuff, A, it was part of maybe the lifestyle that you were in at that time and it was also maybe a band-aid to kind of just like um, I don't know, put a, a sheath over what was really going on. And then you just kind of awoke from it and was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I don't even think, I don't even think I had the awareness mm. of what was, what felt so lost inside of me. Yeah. I don't even think I had any idea. I remember my brother saying something to me in high school was like, Oh, well you won the genetic lottery, but like basically you're a fucking idiot. But like there were just these messages of like, that's nice. <laughs> He was, I mean, I love my brother, yeah, yeah, but he's course. just kind of an asshole. <laughs> I love him, though. Um, but those were just these subtle messages where that that's where the value lies. And I hadn't had enough life experience like I've had now to see, oh, my, I'm actually really good at this, this, this. Mm -hmm. This is where my skill sets lie. This is whatever. I just never had that opportunity. Worked in restaurants. I worked at Mastro's, yeah. Ocean Club, all through college. And, uh, you know, just met a group of friends. And I was having a great time. Like, I don't, it's not like I'm, I don't regret a lot of the decisions. I think that we just, they all kind of weave their way into, like, what we're supposed to find out about ourselves yeah. in due time. And for me, that happened in my late 30s. <laughs> You know. Yeah, I. I mean, I, I've never been. Um, I've never been knighted as like you know a, a model or somebody super good looking to have to worry about the external of things. But I can relate in the aspect that I have such a. I, I am. I'm attached to a physical ego. Like you know, at 50, I'm still doing bodybuilding shows. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm doing it for the aspect of I love you know health and wellness, and that's the life that I live. And it's also. Um, you know, indoctrinated in me after, you know, being sober that I don't want to be a fat piece of shit walking around, you know, sure. as an old man. But there's a lot that goes with the physical aspect of it that I like to look at myself in the mirror with abs. Right. You know, it's like, and so there's kind of that, that counterbalance of, you know, oh, shit. And, <laughs> and I've, and I think I've noticed it's always going to be there. Like the voice is always going to be there. The the inner critic, all of that stuff. Yeah. It will always be there. I think for me, it's been opening this can of worms of understanding, like, what are some of the wounds? What are some of the things that are there? Recognizing my own bullshit and just, I'm aware of it. Like, I, I'll give you an example. I used to do, like, the bikini shows and stuff like that. I did that. And then every once in a while, now I'm like, oh, like, I'd love to do that again. Like, that sounds fun. But I have to check myself, why am I doing this? Right. Am I doing this because there's a part of me that doesn't feel enough, mm -hmm. doesn't feel seen? I need the, I don't know, the validation of other people yeah. kinds of things. And then I will check myself and be like, no, like <laughs> that doesn't align with who you are, Laurel. Right. Like, I am an on or an off. There's go Same. and stop. Yeah, like, welcome there's to two the, speeds. Yep. Um, I was watching one of your things on Instagram. It was something about chocolate or whatever. Yeah. It was like well, some people can have one piece and then my they're wife. good. Yeah. My husband. M moderation. I can't do that Dude, to save my that? life. I know. One piece. I'm like, I want the whole thing. Yeah. So which is why we can't drink, which is why we can't, mm -hmm. which is why I'm sort of an obsessive type of person with my business now. It's yeah. like I find ways to channel that into things that are positive. Um, because what, what just month how were you we born? 
Tor- uh, I'm a Taurus in May. Okay, I'm Aquarius. I, I, there's something, there's something interesting about people such as ourselves that have a lot of those same similar traits. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then sounds like obviously you married right, I married right, but we married <laughs> the opposite of what we are in order to counterbalance. It's almost like grounding. It's like being married to yeah. somebody that grounds you. I mean, don't. That's a whole other rabbit hole. I don't know if you want to go into, <laughs> into that or not. You know, but what I've learned a lot in terms of how long have you been married? Uh, I've been with my wife about 12 years now. Okay, 14 for us. Yeah. And one of the things I've learned in kind of my own work is generally the theory yeah. that I, I do believe now is that we, each person has this image of what love looks like to us based on the positive and negative characteristics of our parents. Mm. And so unconsciously, we will only be attracted to a partner (laughs) who hurts us in the very same ways that our parents did. And that's been very true in my, in my life. But I think it's also such a, such a blessing because if you have a partner like I do, I'm so blessed to have him that he's willing to look at those things and work on it yeah. with me where I think there's so many people that are not, it's like, well, eh, status quo, maybe we're not super happy, but like it is what it is and we're willing to work on it and like address those things and look at them critically. Well, well marriage is, I mean, it's work and, and it's not necessarily good or bad. It just is what it is. It's communication, it's involvement, mm-hmm. it's being present for your partner. hundred percent. Have you ever heard, I'm sure you've heard the saying, it's like, choose your heart. Yeah. Like being overweight is hard. Right. Being fit is hard. Well, being in a relationship, in a conscious, loving, connected, yeah. open, mm-hmm. all those things takes work. Right. But right. being single and being alone and lonely and out there on the takes prowl to is oh, yeah. <laughs> hard too. So like, which one do you want? You know, pick your poison. My wife still doesn't believe that I had girlfriends before her. So we leave all that history behind. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, well, okay, so getting back to what was the um, what was the trigger for you that gave you the final, um, let's just say, you know, stopping point to say, okay, this is my my last drink, or I had my last drink, or you know, I'm 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 done. Like, what was it that just crushed you? Oh gosh, I mean, I remember for years, years trying to moderate. You know, that idea yeah, of yeah. like. You do something stupid, say something stupid, yeah. fight, whatever. Right. And I was like, I'm not a really fun person sober. So, like, my husband teases me. He's like, you're already, like, a 10, like, in the intensity <laughs> scale. Like, throw some sauce on that. And yeah. we never know what we're going to get. Right. You know, it's like a little bit of a loose cannon. Um, so, but he would get the worst parts of me. I'd be super fun while we were out and I'd go home and pick a fight or cry or whatever. And my telltale sign was like, I'd wake up in the morning and like, kind of like reach over. This was with my, uh, my ex as well. Kind of like reach over to whatever. And if I got like the, whatever, it was like, Oh, like what I do, what I say. And I think I just had enough bad experiences, um, that I just was fucking done with it. Yeah. And I equate this, you know, I'm, I own personal training studios. I equate this to my clients where they say they're not going to eat something. They're not going to do something, whatever. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. Right. And then they don't. Right. They feel like shit about themselves. And the whole shame cycle repeats every single day. And I think that's what it was with my drinking. I read, um, have you read uh, Annie Grace, This Naked Mind? Mm-mm. That book changed my life. Really? Hmm. Um, I got about halfway done with it, and I remember laying in bed and telling my husband, I'm never going to drink again. Wow. And he didn't believe me. He's like, okay, whatever. So you remember that moment? That was your moment? I remember that moment. I don't remember why, but we were living at my mom's house for like a period of time, I think renovating a house or something. And I remember being in that bedroom, laying there, and him being like, okay, like, whatever. And... um, There was just something about that book. It was like it broke down all of my excuses for Mm -hmm. why I did it. I love the taste of wine. This, uh, it's like a, it's fun. I would shame my husband all the time. Like, you're not going to be fun with me tonight. Like, you're going to be boring. Well, maybe I'm just boring without it because I don't know how to have fun without it. I don't even know who the fuck I am without this. Yeah. And, um... 
So that that book really was eye opening for me. And I mean, I know there's probably three or four people that are 100 percent sober because I've told them about that book. My father in law being one of them. Right on. Um, so he's. I don't know, four and a half years or something at this yeah. point. So, yeah. So so did the relationship with your husband change after that? No. I mean, Andy's not a big drinker, never has been. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he was an athlete, so he's very uh, disciplined and regimen and things like that. And so I think our relationship's gotten better Yeah. Um, because he was never, I mean, he, he'll have one beer a night, two beers a night, and he's fine. It's my wife. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's like one glass of wine a quarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it made our relationship better because, you know, he wasn't so worried. Yeah. You were more present. Yeah. About like, what kind of laurel am I going to get? And I think the other thing is when we would go out, I'm such a social person. Yeah. I wasn't aware. I might think that I was gone for five minutes and I was gone for 45 minutes. Right. And like left him hanging out here and I was just, you know, talking to everybody. And to me, I had no idea. But to him, he's like, dude, hello. Yeah. Yeah. You know? we're, we're so the same in that context. I mean, th- th- listening to you tell your story is like me listening to myself. Really? I, I mean, yeah, because I obviously I'm very social. Um, I'm the life of the party. And when you put alcohol in me, it was like it was uh, times 10, you yes. know, and there was no need for it. And right. I and my wife got the brunt of the worst of it, you know, 100 percent. Yeah. And so that just wasn't fair to her. And so. When you remember your moment, I remember my moment, and I was in Dairy Queen when I was like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Done. Mm-hmm. And that was it, you know? Yeah. And I think that, like, so many things, the hardest part is making a decision, whatever it is. I, yeah. th- I tell clients that, and I will share that story with them because I, I think sometimes people will look at, you know, like a fitness person right. and assume that, oh, man, they've just got it all figured out. It's easy for them. Yeah. And so I will share that, some of these stories, because I never want people to think that, like, we all have our thing. We yeah. all have our thing. We have our vices, our challenges, whatever. And there's that, um, I think my superpower is that vulnerability with people of just kind of laying it all out there of, like, we're not so different, you and I. Right. You used food. I used alcohol, whatever. Yeah. The the symptom, the pain is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Of why we're doing it. Completely makes sense. Um, no, and I appreciate your superpower and utilizing it here. So that being said, let's get into some other aspects of things and let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. So you obviously, you own a gym now, aren't you? You said you're building like two others? Six. Six others. Okay. So mm-hmm. you're getting busy here. Yeah. What were you doing? What? Where did your on- entrepreneurial journey take you before um, establishing the, you know, the gyms? Yeah. Well, I was... Um I was with my husband in Dusseldorf, Germany, and he was, it was supposed to be one season of hockey. So we met and moved to Germany with him after two weeks. Okay. It was very, probably not the smartest decision. I wouldn't probably recommend that (laughs) to my kids. Do not take relation advice from (laughs) Right. Yeah. But it felt, I don't know, I'm just a very like intuitive gut feel. I just knew like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, okay. If this guy's a total asshole, uh, I can come home, whatever. And uh, so we went from like two weeks to like, boom, living together. Then I was there two seasons and got, and got married. And um, when it was sort of nearing the end of his career, I said, dude, I gotta get, I gotta get back to work. I'm 26. What am I doing? We don't have kids. I'm living over here. Like what cooking for you? Like, I'm just not. And I remember hating this feeling of just, I felt so needy. Yeah. Like he'd be at practice and I'd be like, when are you coming home? And like, oh ugh, ugh. like I hated it. I just was not, I didn't have my own thing and I didn't know what my thing was, yeah. but I knew I was supposed to do something right. bigger. And, um, I remember I put my job up or my, uh, resume out there And this guy, Ryan Stark, he owned a a small commercial, like mom and pop commercial cleaning company. Okay. And he was just this hipster, like tight pants, Gucci belt, like guy. And we just, I mean, we had like an hour and a half Zoom call, just totally hit it off. He told me he wanted to grow into like uh, janitorial services and like the bigger buildings. He was, it's not called Orange, is it? Yes. I know, Ryan. What? Dude, yeah, I had coffee with him on 32nd Shea a while back or whatever. I mean, long time, years You're ago. Kidding yeah. Me. So, okay, keep going. So, Ryan. That's hilarious. 
and total so, hipster. When you said that, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy. Like, like, is his name Ryan? Is cleaning guy? <laughs> like what? Yeah, I know. He just he stands out like a sore thumb yeah. in the midst of what everybody Great else in that I industry. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he hired me, and I remember I didn't sell anything for six months. Good job. Go me. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. All right. But I think we had so much trust, and I would communicate with him, this is what I'm doing. I mean, he wanted to get into these bigger buildings. Yeah. He wanted to get on the vendor lists and whatever. We didn't know how to find these customers, where they were. Nothing. Right. So I'm do starting from square one, and... Um, I just did what I do. I networked with people. I found out what associations to be in, built that business up, my division. And yeah. I remember like pivotal moment, we, CBRE, one of the biggest real estate, mm -hmm. whatever, we got on their vendor list and we sold Esplanade, ah. million dollar a year janitorial contract. Wow. We were the smallest one in, in there. Nobody thought we were going to get it. Yeah. And Ryan and I were both so innovative in like our approach to like, how do we make cleaning, which is very much a commodity, how do we elevate this and make it something where it's now like it's an experience where, I don't know, we just did it in a different way. We had creative marketing, That's great. all these different things. Yeah. So Ryan was really one of the first people that I think, number one, he believed in me even though we didn't really have evidence for the first six months that yeah, I was right. going to do well at my job. But then when I started, then the, all the RFPs started rolling in and I started winning all this business and the company started growing. And basically we were failing operationally, but I was selling it and I kind of got told to stay in my lane, not by Ryan, but like the operational yeah. people. I started going out at night, meeting the cleaners, meeting the managers, understanding the cleaning plans, how to do it. I would do all the building startups myself. So I'd wow. be out selling during the day, be out at night, making sure it was done right. And um, it just was really a difficult business, very complaint driven business. Nobody's yeah. telling you're doing a great job emptying their trash. And so the company grew really quickly, but I just was so burnt out yeah. by it. Didn't feel like I had really a lot of the support, but man, I cried when I put in my notice, like, I really, I owe so much to Ryan. Like, he encouraged that not just being a yes man, having yeah. solutions, having ideas. And um, I don't think I would be where I am without, like, his mentorship. You learned a lot. That was your season of life then. And yes. it's brought you to where you're at now. Yeah. yeah. So basically quit. Uh, my husband found TriFit, my first studio. Okay. And it was being run semi-absentee. So that's what I thought I wanted at the time. I was yeah. super burnt out. I got in there and about a week and a half in, I was like, let's grow this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it yeah. didn't last very long. And so I've owned that studio for uh, seven years and um, joined a mastermind group two years ago. My, my good friend, Mike Arce, is the CEO. And um, basically, we doubled in a year. Uh, the first year that I joined the mastermind doubled in revenue. Yep. And so he was kind of watching me, you know, like just seeing what, what we did. And um, so he approached me last year and said, I, I want to open these studios. I think it's a very smart business model. Um, low employees, very profitable. And it's basically what I'm doing already yeah. at TriFit. It's yeah. a very similar model. And so I said, yeah, like, let, let's do it. So we have six licenses here in Arizona. Great. The first one opening in Scottsdale uh, at the end of this year. And then uh, Peoria is early 2026. Nice. And I'd like to open the other four pretty quickly after that. I yeah. just want to have the management structure in place a little more first. I love that. It's so funny you bring up Mastermind and Jim. So Jeremy Scott, I don't know if you know who yeah. he is. He's my business partner in our mastermind. Oh, really? And we're coaching three gym owners right now and cool. have helped them develop their programs. And I've and never met him, but I have an employee who worked for him for a while, and he said just a, just an incredible mentor yeah. to him, very humble guy. So I'd love to meet him sometime. Absolutely. I'll bring you over there for a workout or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Jeremy's the best. So that's just, again, synergies and six degrees of separation. Um Absolutely love that. So that's so that's cool. So you're building these up. You're doing that. Um, how do you have time for this with three kids and husband and, and all that? Uh, <laughs> I think I, for most people, if you don't know what 
get your ass up in the morning, what you are here on this earth to do, what yeah. you're passionate about. I think, um, you know, you could feel a little bit lost. For me, as, as cheesy as this sounds, and you probably read this on my LinkedIn, I have to do something that I feel like I am in service of other people, like yeah. where I'm making a difference. I could go work in sales tomorrow and probably make more money or do whatever. I think that I was put on this earth to make a difference in some way. And so health is one of those things that right. I think it doesn't fix everything, but it fixes a lot. Yeah. Fixes a lot of things because when you're aware of the body movement, what you're eating, your sleep, all these things, if you're aware of your body, then it just, it like it funnels into every area of life. Yeah. Well, so. well, you would agree to this and, and, and this is something that I think resonates in, in the aspect of talking about all of us are different individuals. What we do for ourselves will not work for somebody else. Maybe certain aspects of that will work for other people. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, when you look at your your daily mantra and the things that you do to embody yourself and feel passion. I know you meditate. I know you just were talking about you went on a ayahuasca, you know, trip. I mean, yeah. there's things that you're doing. What What are some of those non-negotiables that you do every day um, that give you that completeness? Mm -hmm. I think uh, daily quiet introspection time with myself if I don't do that, I notice like the weeks, like this week, I just told you before, I'm in full hiring mode for the studio. Yeah. Um, my husband's out of town, so I have three kids that I'm, it's bananas, you yeah. know? And when I, when I notice if I go too long without, like I start my day every morning and I am by myself, yep. quiet meditation, um, I read a lot. Um, and then I think there's some, this is a whole nother thing, but there's somatic practices too, breath work, emotional release. There's things like that, that I think your emotions are stored in the body. Mm -hmm. And if you're not dealing with that, you could have all of the, um, mentally the right thoughts, but we're responding based on our like triggers and wounds and all those things. Yeah. So I think just anything that allows me to tap into like connecting with myself right. and staying centered first. And then I think the other thing is I don't, uh, my threshold of going too long with negative behaviors, it's pretty short. Like after a couple days of maybe like not eating the best or not getting a workout in, not doing my walks, those yeah. kinds of things. I have maybe three days where I'm like, okay, reel it back in. Like yeah. something's off where I think some people might go months Yeah, yeah. where they're just no awareness of that kind of stuff. I have a couple days. Well, it, it, again, it lends back to addiction and you can be either addicted to the really good stuff or you can be addicted to the really bad shit. And, you know, like you, I will have like a, a night where I'm just like, OK, I'm going all out. Now they're few and far in between because I'm so type A. Like I on my phone, I have a macro tracker. I mean, mm -hmm. I like literally track everything that I eat every single day. Like, yeah, I, I can't do that shit anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I have to in order to know that these pants are going to fit. I'm going to yeah. look this way. I mean, it's so you know, it's so weird. But we all have our different things that right. help us. I remember at one point, David, I had the Whoop band. Yeah. I had an Apple Watch, uh -huh. and I was tracking my macros. And recording my workouts, like PRs and You're sets right. and whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, T too much, you know, to that point, like all or nothing. So yeah. I think I'm constantly kind of striving, like when I get too far yeah. in one area or another, okay, I got to like reel it back to something that's more reasonable. So it's yeah. a, it's a flow for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say that this season of life that you're in now, how would you compare it to, say, in your 20s, that season of life? And and as you had said before, and, and I'll say it for myself, zero regrets. It's just where we were at. But right. what is it like now at this age and growing businesses and having a family and you know, now you're meditating. I'm sure you probably weren't doing that in your twenties, right? Hell no. <laughs> no, you're waking Hell up no. hungover. And, yeah. yeah. So what's waking up? up hungover and having a glass of champagne to take the edge exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, to the sound of, mm, 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 right. I still love that. Yeah, still I will love. listen to that at 5am <laughs> blasting in my car. I love it. That's um, hilarious. Yeah. I mean, what was the question? <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts on your season of life right oh, now? Oh, season of life. Yeah. Um, I think 
right now is probably, if I had to characterize it in one word, it's healing. Okay. That uh, I, I want to play bigger. And so I think um, I, my mentor told me one time, he's like, Laurel, you know, to run a $100,000 company you, or to run a $500,000 company, you need to have skills that are not there when you're running a $100,000 company. Yeah. Or a million-dollar company, you have to have more skills than running a $500,000 company. So I think as you level up in different areas of your life, and I'm just not talking about financial or business, yeah. but like on everything, I am looking at all of it. I'm looking at how am I showing up as a wife, how am I showing up as a mother, for my team, yeah. as a leader. Um, I can't do any of those things if I don't have the deep awareness of like my own bullshit mm -hmm. and what's affecting how I'm showing up in those areas. I can't. That's great. If I respond to my husband and bite his head off because I have a trigger about something, like that's Just, not him. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? If I have a barrier in like getting something done in the business because I'm not organized or I'm not whatever the thing is, that's a me issue. Yeah. I can't level up in all these areas unless there's that self-awareness. So I think that's kind of where I'm really like diving in at this point. That's cool. That's really cool. I it, it, look, it's um I think it's really good advice for anybody to just be self-aware and understand that, um, you know, the things that bother us are really about us. Yes. It has nothing to do with what that person said to you or did to you or whatever. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to mess it up, but it was something like, examine your reactions and it will show you where you're not free. Oh, wow. Whatever the things that piss you off the most, hurt you the most, make yeah. you upset the most that should be the light bulb moment of like, wow, well, like yeah. tune in here. Right. What's going on inside in me. Right. That's making this situation, making me react that way. Cause it's not the thing. Yeah. It's your response to the thing. Thousand percent. That's you know? cool. So I'm trying to remember that as I'm growing businesses and shit's going to go wrong yeah. and there's going to be unexpected things or I've got three tween girls. Yeah. Good luck. <sighs> Wow. <laughs> Good luck. Three you know. girls. I mean, holy crap. Yeah. I had a little bit of a meltdown about it yesterday that, that uh, you know, my girls come, my two foster kids come from a trauma background. Yeah. So I ask sometimes, okay, God, like, why, why me in this situation? And I believe it's like I have that emotional capacity to handle it, to hold space yeah. for all of this stuff that they're all just kind of ping-ponging from one to the next with whatever's going on with them yeah. and choosing to respond the best way possible. And I'm gonna, I'm, I screw up all the time, but yeah, <laughs> it's that's, hard. No, that's <laughs> great. I mean, bless you for doing Yeah, that's great. Um, do you have any uh, like new hobbies that you've taken on, you know, at this stage of your life that you were like, or, or maybe things that you've re-engaged in that you were doing, you know, that you enjoyed when you were younger? Um, I just finished, uh, Michael Burnoff. I don't know if you know him. He lives, he's local. Yeah. Have you heard of him? I've heard of him. He's a just master communicator, influence, persuasion, whatever. I'm yeah. just took his course and I'm going to his event in October. But, uh, he encouraged, uh, all of us in the group said, if you, Stop trying to do the same things you always do, want to try to do. Yeah. Like eat better, work out. Da, right. da, da. He's like different. Get yourself to do something different. Yeah. And that will spark your brain into learning mode of mm -hmm. whatever. So I joined a uh, um, Toastmasters. Okay. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Yeah, that's cool. I think just learning to be a better communicator, better speaker, yep. th those kinds of things. I don't know where that will take me, but... Um, I'm doing that, and um, I, I don't know. I love lifting. I love. Cool. It's always been my thing. Yeah. Um, I lift really, really heavy. I'm like the strongest skinny girl you'll ever see. Right on. Um, but I just love the feeling of. I don't think enough women experience that. Yeah. Just that, like, right. like a feeling really powerful. 
How often do we experience that you in can, our day to day? Yeah, you have to come do Metcon with us. You'll, you'll. I would love to come. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like lifting really heavy weights, I think is is uh, is super cool. I love that too. That's, That's my great. Favorite. Yeah. This is cool. Awesome. All right, I have some rapid fire questions for you. You ready? Ready. Okay. It's gonna be. Means fun. I have to answer them quickly. You can answer them any way you want. Okay. <laughs> Leg day or rest day? Leg day. Okay. Aliens or Bigfoot? Bigfoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> macro count or wing it? At this point, wing it. I, I know. You know. Yeah. It's my protein. This An is egg my is car. six yeah. grams of fat, six grams of protein. I mean, I know. Yeah, you got it down. <laughs> Star Wars or The Notebook? The Notebook. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> What would you think if you look at me? <laughs> I, do, I don't know. I mean, everybody's, yeah. Uh, pizza or hamburgers? Hamburger. Yeah? Yeah. You got a favorite place out here? A burger place? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do love, I brought my daughter in and out yesterday. Yeah. I do love in and out burger. That's pretty, yeah. I mean, it, you know what you're getting. I could probably eat two double doubles. Could you? No problem. Bun or no bun? Fun. I mean, if you're doing it, yeah. like, really? All right. <laughs> the fries, all of it. I kind of, I kind of laugh at that. People are like, "No bun." I'm like, "You're eating. It's, it's like a thousand calories right. for the thing. Just, just add the bun. Just do it. Yeah. Get a little gluten in. Jeez. <laughs> um, chill at home or travel? Travel. Okay. Love travel. That's where's definitely the, one. Where's of my... the last place you went? Um, I mean, we were gone all summer. I love. I know I don't look super woodsy. Yeah. Um. But I grew up camping. Okay. And so I love being outside and in the woods. June Lake, California. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Teeny tiny, yeah. like 600 people. Right. Beautiful lake surrounded by white cap mountains. Uh, we're going to St. Bart's in October with okay. some friends. So um, we travel a lot. Nice. Yeah. Chill at home for me. Um, <laughs> Halloween or the 4th of July? Halloween. Okay. It's coming up. My favorite costume all of my friends were Britney Spears and the various <laughs> outfits. I was the red one. The all red. The all know? red? Yeah. Yeah. How Britney Spears. <laughs> what happened to her? Um, would you rather read a book or scroll through your phone? A book. Yeah. I'm a big reader. I think we, we caught on to that early. Yes. And then um, last but not least, uh, Warrant or White Snake? Well, I don't even know who Warrant is, so I'm going to go White Snake. <laughs> She's my cherry pie. Oh, okay. Well, I know the song. I didn't okay. know I'm saying it. Yeah. I mean, or Heaven Isn't Too Far Away. Remember? Heaven Isn't Too... <laughs> I'm a butt rocker. I, obviously, you're a furs, you know, but I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of... So it's a t uh, Tiesto. That's my jam. Tiesto. Ten, okay. No, he's been around like 20 years. I yeah. followed him around Ibiza, Vegas. Like, he knows our group. Like, he'll, like, wave. Like, he knows. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I, do you know who Bon Jovi is, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All yeah. Right. I'll give you Bon Jovi. Okay. Bon Jovi. Um, this is fun. So where can, and, and I'll put everything in show notes. I have all of your stuff I found online. But um, if you want people to reach you or join your gym or any of that sort of stuff, just vocally give it up. Yeah. Um, well, I have two. TriFit Wellness. Okay. Quick Google search. That's fine. Or Alloy Personal Training is our second brand that we're opening. So you just put in your zip code and it'll show you the nearest location cool. as we're opening those. And then you can find me on LinkedIn. Just put the, hey, I saw you on the podcast, so I know who you are. There you go. Everybody's yeah. trying to sell people shit. You yeah, know? 100%. I get 10 of them a day. Yes. Hi, my name's Alibaba Hala Canada. Right. And I have an AI engine. That I'm like, dude, leave me alone. No, thank you. Yeah. I yeah, know. it's not even like hello. It's not even can I buy you a cookie to take your pants off, right? No, it's not. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm just gonna fuck you right now and give yeah, you the yeah, <laughs> you're a real human being and you live right. five minutes from my house. I was like, great, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to go off on the LinkedIn thing. Oh, it's, it's so frustrating. Nuts. What is it? Freelance, uh, <laughs> like VAs, designers, <laughs> right? And. Uh, like sometimes, I don't know. Those are the two big ones. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, and I couldn't even imagine being like a, a, a whatever, semi-attractive even woman. You know what I'm saying? But like even Jeremy, like Jeremy um, has stuff with his shirt off or whatever. And he's like, dude, bro, have you even saw the DMs that I got? Oh, like, it's I'm crazy. Like, uh, no. I posted something. I think it was my five, four year sobriety on there. Yeah. And I had guys hit on me from that post. I'm like, dude, <laughs> really? <laughs> 
It's fucking LinkedIn. What are you doing? Congrats on your four years. I got four something I can give you. <laughs> gur, gur. Yeah, well, I'm over it. Idiot. Yes. So please just be a normal person. Yeah, just be. I, a human. I, I'd love to connect with you. Just be yeah. normal. Don't exactly. Hit on me. I, and I can vouch for that because I never met her before. I, you know, there's no. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, you are normal. I'm normal. Yeah. Right. And we had fun. So. Absolutely. This is great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and taking your time. I thank know you're you. busy, and I'm excited to watch your gym journey and establish a new friendship. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to go work out together. That'll be fun. Yeah, Metcon, we're doing it end of this month. Sweet, um, that'll be perfect. So, uh, thank you everybody for listening. Please subscribe on YouTube if you're on YouTube, and please subscribe on the um, Spotify or Apple wherever you're watching. Please five star it. That'd be great. It gives us some um, some great uh, uh, whatever you call it. That that's the algorithm. In, the, yeah, thank you. The algorithm. <laughs> I'm gonna start an album called Algorithm. And uh, until next time. Peace out.